Hey, we are Ben and MP and welcome to Sailing Yaba, where we have been rebuilding a wooden schooner over the past three years and we're getting very close to launching now. Our steering system went through a lot. The original rudder system was made with ropes and nylon pulleys. Those ropes got tangled many times, causing us to spin circles out at sea until we could untangle them. One of the worst moments I remember is our rudder getting completely stuck in the middle of some super yachts and very nice sailing boats. That's something we would also definitely like to avoid in future. We did upgrade that system. We upgraded to a motorbike chain, a motorbike cog that wasn't to our liking. The only problem with that is the steering was quite stiff and heavy. I think is a little bit heavy. My goal of today is to remove all of that and upgrade this system to something that will hopefully be invincible and unbreakable. So let's see what we can get out of this and hope you enjoy this video and you can easily support our journey by clicking that like button or subscribing to our channel. Hope you enjoy the video. A while ago we started working on the rudder system adding all the pulleys, pulling the steel wire through and all that. Thanks to you we are going to be able to upgrade that system because of the comment section below. We always enjoy it when you give some useful feedback. One of the main comments which we could do or work on very easy and soon is remove the nylon pulleys and replace them with some good, beautiful bronze pulleys. They also provided us with these very nice, I think they're like uh, the kind of a axle for this pulley, but also carries grease. So it stays greased as long as we keep it filled, of course. These old casings have one big hole on one side and a smaller hole on the other. That's how the previous nylon pulleys were fastened, like kind of riveted. However, now with this, we're gonna have to open the smaller side to fit it in. So I've got Jonathan here, he's not only helped me loads with my back, he's been my physio for a while and he knows that working on a boat is not good for you. He's also going to help out today with this. We have about an hour left until it's beer o'clock. Uh, I think we can get these drilled for sure. And uh, we're just going to chuck these in the vise and see how far we get. Hey, this is all that is to it. That's the easy bit. The hard bit is putting it all back in place and making sure it works with the new system, which you're going to see soon. Now, the thing is, you don't want to be tightening this nut so hard that the metal or the stainless steel plates squash the wheel and it doesn't spin anymore, which is why there's this, it makes the nut stick to the thread without using a washer, because the washer still, you have to tighten it. And we don't want to be tightening this. My instinct tells me, yes, you shouldn't tighten it too much, but I just want to give it a bit of a, just that. So it's not by hand, you know what I mean? spin. One more thing that I forgot to mention, see this little bronze, I'm gonna call it nipple on top, is you can just fill it with grease and it self greases the, uh, the axle. One thing I have to do is countersink that top uh, part of the screw and the nut because that wasn't there before, it was flat and it was a rivet so it was just up the top. So I'm gonna just have to countersink that. Also I'm gonna work a bit more on the pulleys under the steering to get them closer to each other so they're not, an, so they're not at an angle anymore and don't get in the way. So we'll see how this goes. That is the two interior ones installed. Next step, I'm gonna go outside, make sure the last two pulleys fit. Then I'll come in and I'll work on the bit under the steering. And then we've still got the the steering system upstairs which has been modified in a very cool and professional way this time so we hope you like that. The biggest change I think we made and also thanks to your advice is the cog we used to have used to be about this size and it used to be kind of a bodge work onto the shaft of the steering. Now not only have we reduced in size but also the teeth have increased in size massively. And what does that mean? That means the chain goes from something that looks like this to something 
that looks like that. A very, very big difference and a lot stronger. So I'm gonna just put this all back together. Maybe Nico can help me put it back where it belongs. And then we can start hanging the chain on, attaching the wires and pulling it to those pulleys once I've installed them when the epoxy is cured. There we go. Hopefully the steering box is now permanently in place. But the next step is from here downwards and to the transom. You might remember I fastened these two pulleys over here. So the wire or the chain plus the wire comes down, goes up at like, what is this? Just under 45 degree angle and then goes aft. One thing that I want to change is I want the wire to come down, make a loop here and almost go straight up and then forwards, well, sorry, aft. However, there is nothing here that I can fasten it onto. So what I think I'm gonna do, take these off, cut a very big plank that goes from here all the way to here, fasten it nice and strongly, and make sure there's the holes necessary for the wires to go through, but also space for this to be fastened onto. So I'm practically gonna fill the space between these two beams. I have cut these two pieces of Purple heart, which you're going to go here. However, I have to figure out where the chain has to go through it, of course. So that has to be done first, and for that, I need to put the chain on. And if you have a look in here, you can see how small the new cog is. I'm so good, excited about that. The only problem I can see here is that the chain at the moment is touching the wood because the previous chain was wider and would fit nicely. Same here. Now it's a lot smaller, so I'm going to have to open this hole a tiny bit more just to prevent it from rubbing. And we have light again. Now I just need to put two through bolts, uh, through bolts, lug screws over there, and then we're done. Yeah. Oh, this one. There we go. Now we can continue actually working on the rudder system. Ah. I need a coffee first. Figure out where I want these. Now, of course, it's a lot easier now. Well, these are also going to have to move because the chain has moved inwards and these have to move inwards as well. So, a few more holes that I have to plug, but oh well. Either way, very easy to see now where this has to go. All I have to do is drill it, fasten it, and uh, we've just ordered the greaser. What do you call it? So this lid comes off and you just pump some grease through the middle, as well as all the other ones. I'm going to have them pointing outwards so that we don't have to faff with everything in here. I'll leave it like this for now, but I think I will put a through bar, a through bar going from here to the top of the deck, just to really close to the pulley to make sure this area here, no matter how hard this is pulled down and so on, it stays strong. These two are now perfectly centered. 
as it leads to a perfectly centered. So when the chain comes through, it's literally all in a straight line. This one heads straight to the transom. This one, for now, I think heads straight to that pulley over there, but we've got to see. Either way, I'm very happy with this. I'm gonna go and get the stainless steel wire. Everyone's actually going home now, but I would like to already have it pulled through so that tomorrow morning, all I have to do is the pulley on the transom and connect it to the quadrant. That would be absolutely amazing if we could get that ready. Hey, look at me. It's the precious to send this off, okay? Yeah. You see? You're not listening. Look at me. No more stabbing, okay? Yeah. Bell's awesome. Right, here. And then there's here. Oh. Here. Just like the first test, I'm going to put one wire clamp on. Now, MP is going up for the millionth time to turn the wheel again, so she's going to bring this chain up like so, and the other chain down, and I'm going to get the other wire and connect it. And then I'm oh, I forgot about that. And then I'm stopping for today. I think I might need to open this because I forgot the wire clamp has to go through it as well. But, these are those small adjustments that you only find out when and like here for example the wire might get in the way of this and that can move to the side whatever we'll figure all that out in a bit thank you both of these are now fastened for me the day is over for you the next scene is probably me back here because i'm going to open i'm going to cut away those middle bits here because you know, if i pull on here you can see what gets caught over there if i pull on this side that gets caught over there. So I'm going to make the hole or the opening bigger. Probably the same in the deck up there. Just make sure everything flows nicely. This, I'm not sure about it. I don't think it's actually going to get in the way. Maybe I can tie it to one side. We'll see. We'll tie it. I think we can work around that. Either way, all that's done. Just need to work on the platform now. I'm going to leave everything down here for tonight because tomorrow I'm just going to use exactly the same tools first thing in the morning. See you tomorrow. Without further ado, let's connect everything. You've seen it a million times, so I'm going to just connect it here and then I'm going to head back. Fortunately, we're going to have to change the angle of the pulley because the way it receives it and sends it, it's going to wear and tear. So I've just put some fillers on so I don't have to keep drilling while uh, testing it. Nico's in the engine room. Let's get this sorted. And finally finished before the hole was you can see where it is of course I need to explain now it's going to be at this blue angle which means it's going to receive it straight and it's straight through the hole without any issues over here same thing we just measured what was the straight angle from here to here to not have the steel wire pushing down on one end of the pulley now we've got the diagonal hole that's just been made here the thing we need to know now is it can't be flat on the transom unfortunately it has to still be at an angle however it is so tough to get the right angle by chipping into the transom that i am going to make a strong block that's going to come out of the transom which is going to have the pulley on top of it so that block i can make externally like literally on the ground and it can be a lot more accurate and i'm just going to epoxy it to the hole and also the lug screw that's going through the pulley will also go through the block I'm going to make, the filler and the transom and it should be strong and it should just go from straight line from here into that hole and straight in there without having to wear on the bronze pulley that we just replaced. After a bunch of measuring, this is the wedge we need to fit 
behind this. I'm just gonna get a multi-tool, cut a hole in here so the pulley fits through. Should be a tiny bit. That's this. And then uh, that should be nice. I've now got the first one in place and I've got the measurement to make the second wedge. I think this is gonna work really well. Yes, it looks like a complete mess now and I'm really hating it, but I am gonna make sure it's fixed and really clean and you're not even gonna notice anything after. All right, this is the first time I'm doing this. On my next boat, haha, -ha, never. Um, at least like now I've learned and I know how to do it for next time, but hopefully there won't be a next time. Hopefully this will last forever. But yeah, so one side is done. Second wedge is gonna be made. And uh, then I'll probably patch everything up and then uh, put the pulleys in place. Which means then I can pull the wire through and done. Like, done. Looks like a mess now. Still better than it looked before. Either way, what we're going to do now is let it dry, let it cure sand it down and use the fairing compound to make it nice and smooth and hopefully once everything's in place you won't even notice that it was there in the first place that i actually messed up or miscalculated the first time This is supposed to be dry fitting, however, you can see the weather is definitely going to be wet fitting. I just want the whole rudder system to be working, turning, functioning, and on a nice dry day, I can epoxy this in place, use Seeker Flex, and properly paint it all. But for now, it's going to be the dry fit in the wet rain. So, all I'm going to do is fasten these wedges I made, support, put the pulleys on, and test the rudder out. And if this works, then we can do the permanent fit. Hopefully I have everything I need in my back pocket. I've got one screw in here, not in the other side, same there, only one screw because I want to do the test before making more holes. I'm really confident about this guys, uh, still the dry test. Ruff is going to soon pass the wire through there and then I can fasten it onto here. And literally if the plan goes to work now, which has been a while and this is the second time, then I can literally add the second wire clamp on all of them finish painting this in a nice dry day making it look nice and then we're done with the steering system finally so i'm gonna ask him to pass it through and i'll put you on my head have fun budgie rafa The one thing that I think is gonna make the biggest difference on this upgrade is the changing of the angle of this pulley. I was so hopeful in the beginning that having it horizontal would work. But if you look at it now, it doesn't only receive it nicely, right in the middle of the pulley, but it follows the middle of the pulley and sends it straight out again. Before, it did receive it nicely, but however, inside it caught. So if this is the pulley here, the line went in nicely but left 
grinding the side of the pudding. And this took a while. And it's, it, it's perfect now. Done. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> hey, Matilda. Cue the dramatic music. If everything has gone right, this should turn the rudder and make it a lot easier and a lot smoother than it was before. I'm so nervous now actually because I can't wait to move over to the next phase of the build, which is probably launching it, you know, and sailing it. Getting there. This is going to be so cool if it works. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to turn it yet because what I am expecting, I'm going to say it first, chain flows nicely over here, nothing's loose, hopefully. All the pulleys are receiving and sending the stainless steel wire in the same direction in the center of the roll or the pulley and that it's not getting caught on anything. Oh, it's way lighter. Before we had two and a half turns to turn each side, which was five turns in total from full port to full starboard. Now I'm turned fully to starboard, and we're gonna count how many it takes to center it again. One, two, three, four, Eight. Eight. four each side. So we went from two and a half, so we almost doubled or have the ratio, however you want to see it. So it should be kind of twice as easy, but we will have to turn the wheel more times, but it's just the way it is with these boats. I mean, it's going to be a slow moving boat, but I am so happy with this. High five guys. Thank you for all your suggestions, all your upgrades. And uh, one thing I still want to do, of course, is the permanent fit, epoxy it all together, seeker flex, make, it or kit, make sure it's all kitted shut. And last but not least, I'm going to just cut this tube and make sure the steel wire is going through this inside the transom, passing the transom instead of passing through the wood. That's the only change I want to do, but I'm going to close this chapter for you guys now so we can move over to the next. I hope you're really happy with our upgrades because I am stoked about them. And see, teamwork makes the dream work. Thank you guys for all the suggestions. Thanks to you, we'll be sailing easier and safer in the future. All I'm missing is just the horizon of sea or nothing in front of us and not rain and dirt and a shipyard. <laughs> you gonna try it, Pete? Land hoy! Where are we going? All I can see is land, sorry. <laughs> How does that feel? It's so much lighter. And I can see it moving, so yeah, we have to move it more times, but it's a lot lighter and I believe this is how it should go. We had the system done before, there were two things we didn't like about it. One of them being this was a bit too heavy and the second thing, the chain was a bit too thin, we were not trusting it too much. And now it is light, of course once we're in the water and there is resistance, it's going to be a bit heavier, but this is already a lot better. And the chain is really thick and a lot stronger. So I feel that now there is not a, a weak link. point, a weak link between this 
and the rudder, and I, I really couldn't be happier. I think this is it. Turn it. See if we can get that. Oh, ow. Wow. I'm trying to, there it is. See the ratio happening as we speak. We can check it off the list. One step closer. Check. That. Starting from the very beginning, this rudder has gone through a lot. And with that, I mean from when we were bringing the boat over, it's been completely destroyed. The whole transom's been ripped apart. The whole rudder's been removed. We've built a new rudder. We've removed every single thing possible over here and made adaptations. Those adaptations were installed and unfortunately were not the best possible. What happened after that? We removed all of this again. We took all of that whole stainless steel wire apart. And now we have finally come to the point where everything is at its best. With that I mean, I can practically turn the wheel entirely with the weight of the rudder without having to, for example, put force on it like we had to in the previous one. Of course, this is all thanks to all of you guys supporting us. Thanks all for the suggestions in the comments down below. That always really helps us. And I hope you've seen one of your suggestions be one of our changes that makes us happy and hopefully you too as well. Also, thank you so much patrons. Your advice to us is so helpful. Thank you for all the advice in our platform. Thanks for answering and commenting all our questions and also mentioning what we can improve on our weekly updates. Speaking of patrons, we'd like to welcome RFG for joining this week. Thank you so much for your support and thank you so much Duane, Rodney, Douglas, Mike, Joseph, Dave, Dave James, for smashing that super thanks button on YouTube and helping us out so much as well. Your support means the world to us and I cannot wait for your help to bring this boat onto the water and us be navigating here into I don't know where yet. If you have any ideas of where we should go, that's another good suggestion. Guys, comment below where we should go as our first destinations. And who knows, maybe we'll do that. Land Ahoy, as MP would say. For three years now there's been Land Ahoy, but it's time to say, see Ahoy!